Hey YouTube, Gucci Jank here. On today's video, I'm gonna make a four track beat with this toy keyboard right in front of me right here. And I'm gonna do a four track so I can limit myself a bit and force some creativity. And yeah, all the instruments are gonna come right from this toy keyboard. And let me show you a little bit about it. So it has four drum pads. It's a little out of focus, but these four black buttons up here, these are drum pads. It's got right here some built-in uh, drum patterns. And then it has eight different instruments. It's got a piano, an organ, trumpet, violin, music box, bass, kalimba, and synth. And they all sound pretty good in my opinion. So as far as picking instruments, they pick the right ones. Um, and this toy keyboard ha even has audio output. Might have just heard it crackle a little bit as I plugged it in. And that's actually a pretty great feature. Uh, although it will still output sound from the speakers when uh, it's plugged in with the uh, headphones or plugged into my interface. So you might hear a little bit of the keyboard in my microphone as well but hopefully not. So now I'll turn it on, give you a quick demo of what it sounds like, and then we'll go from there in terms of creating the beat. I'm also gonna show you how I made a multi-sampled instrument of the synth tone on this toy keyboard. So let's go ahead and turn it on and we'll listen to some of the sounds. Yeah, it makes that noise every time it turns on, so that's fun. When you turn it on, you're greeted with the piano tone. It's uh, obviously a little bit low fidelity in terms of the uh, sample quality, as I'm pretty sure this is a sample-based instrument. But then here's the organ, the trumpet, got the violin, music box. bass, kalimba, and then the synth. So honestly, they all sound pretty good. And um, I've got to say, the, the bass sound is surprisingly good in terms of a bass, although you may notice this keyboard doesn't have tons of keys. Can't do too much in the bass register, but We'll work with what we've got, and I may wind up uh, doing some transposition inside of Ableton to try to get the, the pitch to where I want it. I can also showcase these drum sounds for you. So here's the kick drum, the snare drum, hi-hat, and it's got the side stick sound as it's labeled. Meant to be like hitting the sticks together. If you watched my previous video, you might have seen this keyboard before and you probably heard these drum sounds before as I used them with a drum rack I created uh, a little while back and I will be using that same drum rack again today. So I'm gonna start with the drums and once again, I'm gonna use this uh, drum rack I created and it's got this extra 707 crash sound, but um, you know, that's just to, to add a little extra something in there. So I'm gonna just find a BPM I wanna work with and then I'll start making a beat. Cool, so I think I'm gonna work with 107 BPM and I'll play you the sounds as I've got them in my drum rack here. That crash is a little loud for me right now, but we're not gonna worry about that yet. Unfortunately, I'm having some technical difficulties with my camera and camera software, so I'm gonna do the rest of this video without it. Not entirely sure where my camera died, in that but i'm gonna pick up from making the drum beat now i'm gonna lay down a pattern cool so i've got a pattern going now 
just a short one bar loop and here's what it sounds like I went ahead and made that on my launchpad using the launchpad 95 software which allows me to use the launchpad as a drum sequencer so now using that as the pattern I'm gonna go ahead and try to come up with a baseline cool I got a baseline and I'm just gonna try to record that in now now I'll just do a little crop to select the part I liked I'll also do some warping just to get the timing a little better Great, got that warp to where I want, and I'm just gonna try putting it down an octave, although I might just be fine with where it is. Down an octave sounded terrible. Just wanna make sure it's properly tuned now. It's right around 15 cents flat. So let's detune that by 15 cents sharp. even go 17 nice cool I like how that sounds and I've gone ahead and created a new audio track and on that one I'm gonna do a melody not exactly sure which sound I'm gonna go for off the keyboard but I will figure that out I like the kalimba sound. I think I have something in there now. I'm just gonna play around with it till I find the parts I like. Great, so I've got my melody. I went ahead and did a little quantization. It's an eight bar melody and I'll let you listen to it now. So now I'm just going to make sure it is also in, in tune. That's good right there. So now, save what I've got right there. And I'm going to deactivate those clips. And then I'm going to take this and put it back in our session view. Drop it right into this right here. Now that I've got that clip back in the session view, we'll take a listen to the whole thing again. So there it is. I made a couple other quantization edits. Now you might have heard a little bit of like sort of noise going on in that in these tracks and that's because the uh, toy keyboard is a bit noisy of an instrument so I'm going to go ahead and do some uh, EQ just to get rid of any sort of extra sound that we do not need in these instruments so you see there's this weird resonance down below around 100 hertz yeah right here so we're gonna get rid of that and we in general don't really get anything below maybe around here yeah so now we'll solo that track and then without the EQ, with the EQ, a little better. You can definitely still hear some weird artifacts in the, uh, the sound, but that's okay. That's just a, a little quirk of the instrument. Now I'll do the same thing over here in the bass. 
now I've gone ahead and created another audio track because the next logical step here would be to create some chords for this song. Now, this keyboard is actually polyphonic. It is polyphonic. But on some of the other instruments, it starts to kind of overload. Yeah, you can totally hear it clipping there. While you could maybe deal with that kind of thing, a great thing to do would be to create a multi-sample instrument that you could then go ahead and play with a MIDI controller to try to get some better control, as well as you could then take those samples and just do all kinds of things in a sampler to add control that you just do not have on you know a toy keyboard that only has so many buttons so i've gone ahead and done that already got a multi-sample of the synth tone uh, i sampled every single key and you can see them all in here and what this sort of allows is with a sample of every note when you play them back on a mini keyboard, you'll be playing each individual note sample. And you might wonder why to do this. Why not just take, you know, middle C or whatever and sample from that one? And that's because when you do that, if you, let's say, play an octave much higher up or much lower down, the way the computer software works is it's changing the timing of your sample to transpose it and so it, it might warp the sound so much it no longer sounds right so that's why you want to take as many samples as you can ideally every note but i've heard every other note is fine now you'll also see these ranges and that's to make sure that they are playing the correct note on each key so i will let you hear what this sounds like and then in comparison to the original synth tone on the toy keyboard so here's the toy keyboard on the synth tone sounds all right but now we'll compare that to the multi-sampled tone Now, of course, the, the sustain that I had before with the toy keyboard is kind of gone. What you, in a, a way to fix this would be you would take another sample of a more sustained note and let's say create another zone that you could change via the selector and have that be for when the note's more sustained or even like a higher velocity. I'm just gonna work with what I've got right now, but you'll also see that I've created these macros so we, we can do some more control. So that's just as is. You got a filter. That's fun. You can play with the attack. Get a little bit more of a pad sound, you know? Play with the decay a little bit. And then the sustain, which will change how it sounds a bit. And then I've added some other controls for vibrato. Added some chorus. Some reverb. Pretty big. And then there's just a volume control. I'm going to listen to the beat I've created now, and I'm going to then try to come up with chord progression and go from there. So I've got 
bunch of stuff recorded now. I'm going to go ahead and find the part that I liked the most, and I'll come back when that's cropped. Great, so I've got the part I liked. I did some quantization on it. It's this part here. I'll have you listen to it now. sample instrument comes in great because I have all of these notes sampled, you know, at the right pitch as well. So now that I've got this chord progression, I can go back and try to create some effects on these tracks just to make it all blend together a little better. I'm also 
also going to side chain that just because I love to do that. Yeah, now the kick fits through a little better. You have you hear that one more time. Without compression, without the side chain, with. work on the kalimba. It's a little too dry for my taste. Start with that. space but now I'm going to definitely add some reverb sound comes from the toy keyboard I showed earlier in the video, the techno beat. Along with this beat, I'm going to try to release this uh, synth Ableton instrument for you to download. would love to hear some of the creations that you make. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.